welcome to the Delphi Economic Forum, all of you, of course, who are present with us, and all of you who are watching online, welcome. And I'm more than happy to introduce our distinguished guest, Ambassador Dor Gold. Um, he's the president of the past president of the Jer Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs and the 11th permanent representative of Israel at the United Nations. Thank you for being here with us. Welcome, welcome to the Delphi Economic Forum. It's a first time for the Delphi. And welcome to Greece, of course, it's not your first time in Greece. And we're going to be discussing a very, about a very promising project and it's the East Med Gas Project. And I would like to start by saying, Ambassador, that according to the UN Environmental Program, um, the East Mediterranean Basin is um, one of the most highly valued seas in the world. So, as an introduction to our discussion, how do you value the importance of such a project and how do you believe it contributes to the energy diplomacy between Greece and Israel? There's no question, there's no question, but that a project of this sort that exists along a strategic axis in the Eastern Mediterranean contributes heavily to our national security, to Greece's national security, and may I say, the national security of uh, a number of the countries along this, this area, this route. And um, I think we have a joint interest in seeing that Western allies get together and advance this, um, this idea, and uh, hopefully they'll do so. That's true, hopefully. So uh, a lot has changed since the launch of the East Med gas project. We have a new world order. We um, have a Russian war against Ukraine, of course. And do you believe that the projects in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, have gained added value and urgency in light of Russia's war against Ukraine and the need for energy diversification, of course, and increased interconnectivity? Yes, I think that uh, few people understood how important it was for uh, Israel and its allies to complete this project. And we saw going back to the middle part of this last decade, how countries were pulling out of this program. And that was most unfortunate. And I think now there is a greater chance that they will um, set their differences aside and work on this program. You know, it's important to remember, we're talking about gas. Gas fits into the rubric of energy. But it's important to remember, uh, for example, the Truman Doctrine, which was the um, foundation stone of the Western Alliance. The Truman Doctrine began with an idea of defending Greece and Turkey. And um, I think that's what this uh, East Med gas project can ultimately become. But it's going to require a lot of diplomatic work. And I think if we um, support it, it will happen. We're going to go to this part, of course, obviously, Greece and Turkey. Uh, I, was, I just want to say that the East Med gas project was backed by the Israel, Israeli Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, and you have very close relations with uh, the Prime Minister, as you have previously served as an external advisor on uh, international issues to Prime Minister. So, and his ambassador to the UN. And his ambassador to the UN, of course. So in what way do you believe that his re-election, his return to power, uh, is going to affect the East Med Gas project and its progress, of course. Well, I think uh, politics is all about perceptions. Hmm. And I think um, the project will be perceived through um, the Prime, Prime Minister Netanyahu's past uh, policy choices. And that includes um, the East Med Gas 
project. What do you believe is the future of gas pipelines in a reality where there is great dynamic in LNG export projects in the region? And of course, do you believe, in other words, are pipelines in jeopardy? In jeopardy? Yeah. Well, you know, this brings you into a position where you can be, um, how would I put this, um, controversial in certain countries. Um, I'm reminded many times that when uh, Mr. Biden became president of the United States, he canceled, not this pipeline, he canceled the, um, um, the pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline, mm -hmm. which is between Canada and the United States. And it seemed that pipelines gave some people an uncomfortable feeling. Uh, but pipelines are critical, and many times if you watch those Sunday shows in the United States, you can see that a number of individuals still feel that the Keystone XL pipeline, its cancellation was a huge mistake. And um, I think we're going into a period where pipelines will be respected. Perfect. Perfect answer. Thank you. That's a clear answer. So the Greek government has very high expectations from the exploration of natural gas in the area south and southwest of Crete Island. Also, the Italian energy group ENI and U.S. energy um, major Severon said in early January that they had made a new gas discovery in an Egyptian offshore field uh, in the eastern Mediterranean. Of course, uh, in addition to that, we, we saw a succession of new gas, gas discoveries in Israel and Cyprus. So, in your opinion, how will these new deposits affect the East Med gas projects, uh, gas project, and will it will they uh, contribute to its revival? In your opinion? Well, you know, when you look at any factor like this, you have to go. Well, will this help mm. strengthen support for the East Med pipeline, or will it weaken it? And I think it will strengthen it. We hope that, because you know it's it's put on the ice for for now. It went on the ice a while ago, and uh, it could well be taken off the ice mm -hmm. and reconsidered. So the Greek Foreign Minister, Nikos, Mr. Nikos Dendias, in his latest trilateral meeting um, a month ago with his counterparts from Cyprus and Israel said that Athens is extending an invitation to Ankara to join in the East Med Gas Forum. Uh, of course, as long as it heeds international law and the United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea. So, do you believe that Turkey can play an active role uh, in the forum? Is there space for Turkey? Well, as I said before, the um, involvement of both Greece and Turkey was instrumental in the beginning of the containment doctrine in 1947. And um, if we want a new uh, position by the West to be confirmed, I think you have to work for both Greece and Turkey. And um, hopefully the Turks will understand that they have a new opportunity. Do you believe that there is horizon in this? Possibility. It's not Turkey gonna joining be. in the East Med Gas Forum. Yes, I, th I don't know, but I think it's not easy. But I think that um, their involvement, again, along with their adherence to international law, you know, I have to share with you something. At a certain time back a few years, uh, I was asked by the Prime Minister to fly to Istanbul and negotiate with the Turks some issues that had kept us apart. And one of those issues was the role of a terror organization called Hamas, which was ordering the murder of Israelis, and they're issuing instructions from Istanbul to the West Bank. You can't do that. That is not consistent with international law. It's not consistent with our international rules. 
And uh, it's my hope that that kind of behavior will not return. Do you think that the pipeline diplomacy and the protection of energy interests in the region promote, can promote uh, the establishment of a four-part defense alliance between Greece, Cyprus, Israel, and Egypt? Well, you left out Turkey. <laughs> um, I think that's certainly a, a Would there be space for Turkey? Do you think that Turkey could be part of this? Well, as I said, I think it's difficult. And you Extremely need difficult. adherence to international norms. And I explained how those norms were not adhered to in the past. So um, effective diplomacy, let's say, let's start with Washington, would be to get Turkey to adhere to those norms. Do you see a new future after the new elections, the coming elections in Turkey? Do you see anything different now? I think it's too early to say, but I think it's extremely important that we build that kind of alliance structure in the Eastern Mediterranean. You can't talk about Eastern Mediterranean alliances without something tangible. And the tangible element here would be uh, involvement of all the countries. Yeah, of course. Yes. So we mentioned the U.S. before. So the U.S. The US Senator and Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations uh, Committee, Mr. Bob Menendez, uh, recently called the East Mediterranean a promising region and highlighted the prospects of the region, uh, despite the challenges posed, of course, by the changing geopolitical uh, landscape. Um, can we please discuss a bit further the role of the U.S. in the East Med gas project? There was a shift. Is there a shift back? Well, another thing you're seeing from the United States is the involvement of major, I underline, major U.S. energy companies. Mm -hmm. When uh, gas was found in Israeli waters years ago, there was a small company called Noble Energy. And um, frankly, it didn't carry the weight, either in Washington or elsewhere, to lock in certain understandings. Uh, Noble was replaced, of course, by um, uh, Standard Oil of California. And the introduction of one of the Standard Oil firms in the Eastern Med certainly bolstered the uh, idea that uh, the U.S. would be getting behind the Eastern Mediterranean gas. Do you believe that the energy crisis due to the war in Ukraine has shifted U.S.'s position towards the East Med gas project? Well, I think initially the U.S. was looking in different directions. First of all, it notified Greece that it wasn't going to support mm. the pipeline concept. And that was very unfortunate, but it took that position. Now, the, the gas pipeline does not require American taxpayer money. Of course. No, but that's very, very, that's very essential. Vital, yeah. And um, you know that made that that made the whole concept much easier to advance and implement. Uh, now, as we go into American elections and we go into a new period, I think we have a shot at getting the next American administration, whether it's Democratic or Republican. I would like to ask you about that. What, uh, what do you to foresee? To be supportive. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to look in my crystal ball and tell you <laughs> who's going to win the American elections. Uh, but uh, I think when we talk to American representatives, about what are our interests in this part of the world, we should all remind them about the East Med pipeline. You can't talk about gas without having an infrastructure mm -hmm. that allows you to pump that gas. Of course. And if you create that infrastructure, you have a good shot at locking in the long-term interests of the United States. So um, as greenhouse gas emissions continue to grow and as extreme weather uh, events become more frequent and of course more harmful, 
Um, the current efforts to move beyond fossil fuels seem to be inadequate, as uh, Mr. Guterres has mentioned so many times. He has stressed that um, again and again. So um, do you believe that the energy transition will reconfigure many uh, elements of international politics that have shaped the global system since at least World War II? You know, um, a few years back, when the previous Israeli government was considering which way to go with uh, the gas, and then it decided to um, halt new um, licenses for companies seeking gas in Israeli territorial waters. Um, I think part of their consideration was that now is the time to work on energy alternatives, mm -hmm. but not necessarily licenses for gas. Mm -hmm. This created a huge controversy in Israel. Yeah. And um, I think it would be useful if we renewed our determination to build up the uh, gas, the original gas concept, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly now with the problems emerging in the Ukraine. And final question, because we have only one minute left. So do you agree with the proponents of clean energy who are hoping and sometimes promising that in addition to mitigating climate change, the energy transition will help make tensions over energy resources a thing of the past? Do, do you agree with that? Well, it doesn't add or up. Or is it too good to be true? It's, it would be nice, but I don't think it's the um, main feature of what we should expect. And I think also there are many writers today who are producing material in you know, uh, journals in Washington, for example, are saying, look, take it easy with this you know, uh, energy um, transition uh, delusion, as they call it. Um, let's first of all reinforce the uh, energy um, resources that we have. And I, I just want to emphasize Israel, Greece, um, Egypt, and uh, whoever joins it mm -hmm. could be instrumental in making that happen. Let's keep that as a message. Thank you so much, Ambassador. My pleasure. Thank you all for being here.